How's it going guys? Vincent here from the creativedojo.net. Today in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to create the mountains in the Type Monkey tutorial that I created a while back. And you know, I wasn't really planning on making this tutorial ever because it seemed very, very easy to do and very simple to do within Trap Code Mirror. But ever since that tutorial, I've been getting a lot of emails asking me how I did it and you know, you guys have been trying to do it, but you guys couldn't do it. So I thought, you know, this would be a good time to kind of just showcase Mirror a little bit, show how to use it a little bit better and kind of just show you guys how to set this up because I think that will help you guys out a little bit for those who are interested in Trap Code Mirror. So if you haven't seen the Type Monkey tutorial yet or the animation for the tutorial, this is kind of what it looks like here. It's essentially me showing you guys how to rig up a nice fancy title animation, complex title animation, um, essentially very quick, very easily using the Type Monkey script. So you can actually set up this complex title animation very quickly with the script. And uh, so check this tutorial out. The links will be in the blog article down below. So it's actually very, very simple here. I made another copy, which is very, very similar and you know, same technique and all that stuff. And you can create some very interesting animations, some nice landscape using Trap Code Mirror. It's a very, very awesome plugin for motion graphics and I highly recommend it. Um, so this is just a very basic zoom in animation. You can create something a little bit more dynamic. For example, this camera movement, we're kind of just tracking to the side here and orbiting around a center point. So you can actually create a lot of interesting scenes using this technique. So let's go and take a look at how to create these mountains within Trap Code Mirror. So let's go and create a new composition. We'll call this uh, Mirror Mountain and we'll make it 720p and 10 seconds long. We'll hit OK. And let's go ahead and create a background layer. So layer new background and we'll make sure this is called BG, make comp size and hit OK. Next, we'll go into the effects and presets and search for an effect called ramp. And this will allow us to create a nice background ramp for the sky. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap the colors and I'll just switch these colors. And I'll change the ramp shape from linear ramp to radial ramp to give us a radial gradient, which kind of looks like a vignette. And we'll just reposition some of these points here and kind of create a kind of vignette kind of look for the sky. And for the start color, we'll set it to a nice bright warm orange kind of like a sunset color here and for the end color we'll make it kind of like this nice purple deep purple here so something like this to kind of give a hint of warmth to it hit okay and we're pretty much set for our background so let's go ahead and create our mirror mountains so create a new layer layer new solid and we'll call this mountains hit okay and let's go ahead and search for trap code mirror. Now this is a third party effect, so it doesn't come shipped with After Effects. You're gonna need to purchase this from Red Giant. So, you know, if you don't have it, go ahead and purchase it. It's a very great plugin, very handy for motion graphics. So check it out. So this is what mirror looks like by default. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn off the background so we can see a little bit nicer. And as you can see, it's like this fractal geometry blob of stuff. And, you know, originally we would create this using trap code form to create these nice, intricate, solid look. But, you know, the render time would be hideous because we have thousands of particles trying to fill up this geometry piece here. But now with trap code mirror, we can create these geometry pieces very fast, very easily. And you can do so much more. So let's go and take a look at the first tab, the geometry tab, which controls the essential shape of the mirror here. Let's go ahead and rotate it on the X negative 90 so that we'll flip it sideways here. Let's go ahead and increase the size in X to make it wider. And we'll also increase the size in Y to make it longer. So probably around 8,000 would be a good number here. And we'll actually go back to this a little bit later. So let's hop into the fractal. And this controls the shape of the geometry. Now again, trap code mirror is fractal based like many things in After Effects. So uh, you know, fractals control the shape of this whole thing here. So let's go ahead and decrease the frequency. And this will actually decrease the amount of mountains that you see or actually decrease the frequency of mountains that you see. So we're essentially we're making it a little bit more simple. So we'll set it to around 250. We'll keep it pretty simple for us and we'll up the amplitude, which is the amount of displacement to 100. And let's go ahead and create a temporary camera so we can kind of see what we're doing here. We'll call this camera, make it 50 millimeter is good. And turn off depth of field for now because mirror doesn't support depth of field currently. Hit okay. We'll also create a new null, null object, make it a 3D null here. And we'll just call this one uh, camera controller. Yeah, you know, I just like to set up a basic camera rig because sometimes the camera gets a little bit funky uh, without a camera rig here. So let's go ahead and just control the camera using our camera controller here. So what I did was I parented the camera to the camera controller null. And if you don't see the parent, just right click, go to columns and make sure that you see parent is checked. 
So now we can control the camera via our camera controller. So let's just pull up the camera up a little bit so we can kind of see our scene here. And right now the shading is just very, very messed up. We're actually using the density shader, which is kind of kind of transparent. You kind of see the dense areas. Let's go to the mirror shader and change the shading from density to flat. So things are just completely flat now. And we'll also change the blending mode from add to normal. So we get no weird additive blending. And right now it looks like a complete mess because we have no lights in the scene. So mirror works best with lights. So we'll go to layer new and we'll add a light. We'll make sure that this is a point light and we'll just call this light one. That's okay. Cast shadows on hit. Okay. And immediately you start to see the results that we're kind of going after here. So let's go ahead and pull up the light here. So hit P on the keyboard and just pull up the light. So we kind of light the majority of the scene and we'll just kind of position it in Z a little bit. So we kind of light the main part of our scene here, right around here. It's looking pretty good. We'll go back into the mountains. We'll go down into the material, which is the materials of the mountain here. I want to decrease the specular because the specular is a little bit too bright right now. And it's starting to make the mountains look a little bit too shiny. So we'll go ahead and decrease the specular to around 20. And we'll also go ahead and change the color of the mountains to kind of this dark gray, dark purple kind of look here. So maybe, maybe somewhere around here. Just a tiny tint of purple here. We'll hit OK. And we'll go ahead and turn on our background again so we can start making micro adjustments that will kind of blend this in a little bit nicer. So I want to go ahead and increase the diffuse, which will just kind of brighten everything up a little bit, maybe 130. Also scroll down to the fall off and change the fall off from none to distance squared. And this will give us a nice, you know, different type of shadow shading here. So I'm going to go and adjust the radius. And as you can see, we get this very, you know, interesting kind of shadow shading here. And let's go down to the visibility. And this is where we can control the fog. And you know, for the fog, we want it to start a little bit further back. So I want it to start kind of, you know, right around here. And I want it to end a little bit further back. So our fog kind of starts over here and it ends way back there. And I want to change the fog color instead of white to match the background here. So I'm just going to click on the eyedrop tool and just kind of sample a color in the background so that the fog kind of matches the background here. Now let's go ahead and focus on the actual shape geometry of the mountains here because right now it doesn't really look like mountains here. So we'll go all the way up back to the fractal here. And one thing great about Premiere is that you can control everything by axes. So we can actually control the X, Y, and Z amplitude individually. I want to go ahead and increase the amplitude in Z to a lot higher number so that we kind of raise the mountains higher. Right around there or so. And uh, maybe play around with the frequency a little bit. Now you can actually adjust, uh, you know, the amount of segments that we have uh, using our vertices here. So, you know, more vertices means that we get more detail, more things to work with here. And I may just want to increase the size a little bit more so that you don't get such sharp edges here. Maybe adjust the amplitude a little bit. And uh, maybe increase the Y amplitude a little bit. Just so we get this nice little mountain range going on. And uh, maybe just pump this up a little bit. And uh, that is looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and set up a basic camera movement. So we'll hit a keyframe for the position of the camera controller at the beginning of the timeline. We'll move to the end here and we'll just kind of just zoom through everything. You know, maybe right around here. So we get this basic zoom that will give us kind of a general idea of what we're doing. And we'll just reposition the light a little bit, move it up, kind of push it back. So we have something like this. And this is essentially how you create the mountains in Trapcut Mirror. You're going to need to tinker around with it a little bit better. Uh, but let's go and take a look at how to color correct this because a lot of this stuff is just pretty much color correction to make it look nice. So let's go and create a new adjustment layer and we'll call this CC for color correction. Hit OK and we'll go ahead and apply a curves effect. And we'll also apply a tint effect and we'll just drag that in. And let's go ahead and turn off the tint for now and just go ahead and really add some contrast to this thing here. So let's really punch it in, dial it in. And let's go ahead and go to the individual channels. Let's go to the blue channel and maybe increase the blue in the shadows a little bit and maybe just 
like this nice little arch going on. And then maybe we can go to the green channel here and maybe increase the green in the highlights, but then decrease it in the shadows. So we get this really nice purple tint. Maybe we'll just mess around with the red a little bit, see what we can come up with. Just kind of adjust and experiment. Something like this, maybe we'll just pull up the shadows a little bit. And uh, you know, maybe we'll apply 10% tint so it's not as saturated and it's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and uh, maybe create a nice kind of glow to this thing because you know, I feel like there'd be like a nice sun back here and uh, it'd be pretty nice to kind of just have a nice haze over everything. This would actually be very easy to do with Magic Bullet looks, but I know you guys are gonna give me a lot of crap over using extra plugins and all that stuff. So I'm gonna stick with the essentials here. Bear with me guys. We'll call this the glow, hit okay and we'll search for glow under stylize and we'll just bring this into the glow adjustment layer and this kind of looks like a nice anime blast or something like that uh, let's go ahead and uh you know maybe decrease the intensity to maybe 0.1 and we'll just increase the radius and kind of just create a nice little haze and maybe adjust the threshold so it just kind of creates a nice little haze over everything, maybe 0.15. And as you can see, this is with the glow and this is without the glow. So kind of just gives it an extra pop here. So if you're seeing banding, um, that's probably due to the gradient and all that stuff. Um, you can actually fix this by going into the project settings here and going to, by default, this is eight bits per channel. You can probably change it to 16 bits per channel to get more uh, color depth. And that will have more color space to work with and reduce banding. You can also go to the background layer, which uses the gradient here, and we have ramp scatter. And what ramp scatter does is it actually kind of just adds a little bit of noise to the gradient, which will actually break apart and break up the banding here. So we'll set it to maybe around 25, and that should pretty much get rid of the banding. Now lastly, I'm going to add a quick little vignette. We'll create a new adjustment layer. We will call this vignette. I'm going to apply a curves effect to this adjustment layer. And I'll just go ahead and just really darken this thing down a little bit, maybe like this. And we'll get the mask tool here, the elliptical mask. So we'll just double click, uh, change the mask from add to subtract, and hit F on the keyboard to bring up the mask feather. And just feather this mask out, maybe 250. We'll hit MM to bring up the mask properties and increase the mask expansion. You know, just a subtle little vignette and maybe hit T on the keyboard and decrease the opacity to maybe 70. And this will just create a very subtle vignette here. And of course you can go crazy, add blurs, you know, and all that stuff and do more with it. You can add text, you can do whatever you want, but essentially this is how you create the mountains here. But again, this is very, very easy to do. I encourage you guys to think outside the box and maybe create something else. So for an example, we can go to the mountains uh, mirror layer here. We can actually play around with the bend. So we can actually bend it in Y and create this very, very nice, interesting kind of cave look here. So we just move the camera up a little bit. You can see that we created this interesting cave tunnel and this can be used in a lot of ways. Um, of course, if you wanna play around with the shape, always go to the geometry and the fractal and play around with the vertices. The vertices can actually really change the look of your mirror stuff by adding more simplicity to it or maybe making it more complex, more segments. So really mess around with the geometry, the vertices, as well as the fractal areas because the fractal is probably the most interesting area. You can also change the F bend X and this will give you some interesting results as well. Um, you can create, you know, an upper tunnel. Um, you know, just play around with all this stuff. You can create some pretty interesting stuff, kind of a canyon look. Also play around with the shader. We can change it from flat to fong. This will give you a little bit more glossy look. Not really my uh, cup of tea here, but you know, play around with then. Play around with uh, the draw here. You can have a wireframe, you can have points. You can do a lot of things with Trap Code Mirror and it's very, very awesome. You can also go ahead and add some ambient occlusion. This will add some nice uh, inner shading to everything. And if you ever get these rigid edges, you can always up the multi-sample from eight to maybe like 35. Uh, not really needed in my case, but you know, it's there if you need it to adjust the multi-sample for the shader.
And just like that, you created a very basic but very interesting kind of landscape uh, within Trap Code Mirror and After Effects. So this is a fairly simple tutorial, but hopefully it helped you guys kind of just figure out Mirror a little bit. Hopefully it gave you a little bit of information about how to use Mirror and it's kind of the workflow that I'm using with Mirror. So rather simple tutorial, but hopefully it helps you guys. And hopefully I will stop getting these emails about the uh, Type Monkey tutorial mountain scene. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. Um, very simple one. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below or if you have any tutorial suggestions or anything like that. Leave them in the comments down below and I'll read them and check them out. But that's pretty much it guys. My name is Vince Lin from the creative and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.